All right, so photosynthesis, it's basically like the opposite of cellular respiration. So cellular respiration, we were oxidizing our glucose to release energy. Here, we're taking carbon dioxide and we're gonna reduce carbon dioxide. We're gonna reduce carbon dioxide and we're gonna to create, now technically the sugar that comes out is called G3P, it's called glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Just know G3P. And then that's, that's the immediate product of the Calvin cycle. And then we have some other reactions that will take G3P and turn it into glucose, okay? Um, here it says CH2O. What they're getting at, the, the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. So it's just trying to talk about this idea that the, the basic format of a carbohydrate is there's twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons and oxygens. That's what they mean by what CH2O. Because there's different sugars that we get out of the Calvin cycle, but they all are gonna follow that format. Um, all right, so there's two, there's two different reactions here. There's the light reactions. Sometimes you hear it called the light dependent reactions because they depend on light. And then there's the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is also called the dark reactions or the light independent reactions because they can happen independent of light. Okay? Um, now, the, the locations of the light reactions are in the thylakoids. Um, remember, uh, the, the thylakoids were in the chloroplast, right? The thylakoids are like a poker chip. And so like, this would be like an individual, this would be a thylakoid. And then this entire stack of thylakoids or stack of poker chips is a granum. I told you to think of like, like a thousand, like granum, like a thousand grand. That's the whole stack, like a big stack of poker chips. Uh, bless you. We use the energy of sunlight, and I mentioned how we're the opposite of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, we produced water when, at the end of the electron transport, or I'm sorry, cellular respiration, we produce water at the end of the electron transport chain. Photosynthesis, we use water. Water is a reactant, it's an input now. We use water, we use light, and we get out oxygen. Whereas in cellular respiration, you put in oxygen. So understand they're backwards of each other. We use the energy of sunlight to make ATP and NADPH. We use the energy stored in these molecules to then create that, that G3P, the glyceraldehyde three phosphate, okay? Um, so, oh, and the location of the Calvin cycle, that's the stroma. That's gonna be happening outside of the thylakoids. The stroma is like the matrix of the mitochondria. It's, it's basically like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast, okay? So that's kind of your, your big overview. Um, if we go over, let's go over the light reactions. Um, this slide, I know it's, this is about the clearest I can get it, so you may wanna get it full screen on your laptop. Um, but what we're doing here is, there are two photosystems. Photosystem two and photosystem one. Photosystem one was discovered before photosystem two but then they realized, oh wait, photosystem two happens first in the process. So that's why the order is kind of goofy. But photosystem two and photosystem one, they're the same basic idea. In both of them, sunlight is gonna come and it's gonna hit these pigment molecules called chlorophyll. Not borophyll, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is gonna absorb that sunlight and we're gonna pass the energy of that light from pigment molecule, from chlorophyll molecule to chlorophyll molecule, until we get to um, another chlorophyll molecule that um, in photosystem two is called P680, and in photosystem one it's called P700. The 680 and 700, they're referring to nanometers of light. They're referring to the wavelength of light that those pigment molecules specialize in absorbing. I think of it as like photosystem two, like it's a two and we're missing a two and 20. It's like 20 left. I don't know, like, cause you gotta know 680 goes with two, 700 goes with one. When you write, when you write like, I don't know if you ever thought about this, when you write seven, you have to like do a one. <laughs> I don't know, okay. Anyways, um, now the energy, the electrons that are, that are, um, uh, 
the energy that P680 absorbs, those electrons are then gonna move from P680 and P700 to um, this little purple bluish box. That's called the primary electron acceptor. It's this molecule that's really, really good at accepting electrons. And it's gonna take those electrons and it's gonna pass it down um, one, uh, one of two different electron transport chains. So there's, there's one electron transport chain that goes between photosystem two to photosystem one. And then there's a second electron transport chain um, at the end of photosystem one. Now, the first electron transport chain, its main role is to make ATP. That's its main job. The main job of the second electron transport chain is to make NADPH. So that's what you see here and what you see there. NADPH and ATP, that was our goal in the light reactions. We use those in the Calvin cycle to then make that uh, G3P. Okay, so then if we walk through that in a little more detail, um, the, how we make ATP in the first electron transport chain is as those electrons are passed down the electron transport chain, the energy um, that we get from passing the electrons from one protein complex to the next is used to pump hydrogen ions from the stroma. This is the stroma. Uh, from the stroma. And that's then gonna give the stroma a low hydrogen ion concentration. We pump those, uh, those uh, hydrogen ions from the stroma to, this is called the thylakoid space. So notice that's the same process as cellular respiration, just different locations. This gives the thylakoid space a high hydrogen ion concentration. And now we have this, this hydrogen ion gradient where these hydrogen ions wanna go from a high concentration in the thylakoid space back into the stroma. But the only way for them to get from the thylakoid space back to the stroma is through ATP synthase, that same um, turbine that we saw in cellular respiration. The energy of these hydrogen ions as they flow through the ATP synthase, that is what's gonna get us to make that ATP that we need for the Calvin cycle, okay? Um, now then the second electron transport chain its story is a little bit simpler. It just, it just makes the NADPH. The electrons that we, we lose, there's, a, there's a, an enzyme called NADP plus reductase. You don't really need to know the name of it. Just know that we make NADPH from it. Um, notice how photosynthesis is NADPH, not just NADH. Uh, basically, that P stands for a phosphate. There's an extra phosphate on that molecule. Um, oh, here, whenever we lose these electrons from P680 and P700, we have to replace those electrons. How we replace the electrons in the first photosystems is through water. Water is how we replace the electrons um, of P680. So I'll put that here. H2O replaces those electrons. And when you remove those electrons from water, that is another source of hydrogen ions for our hydrogen ion gradient. And we then, in the process, that creates the oxygen. That's the oxygen that, gets, that the plants then release from themselves. Um, how we replace the electrons of P700 is through the uh, electron transport chain one. That's how we replace its electrons. Meaning these electrons go from molecule to molecule to molecule, and those electrons then replace the electrons that got lost um, from P700. Um, that should be everything here. Any questions here? I know it's a lot. All right, moving on to the Calvin cycle. So a similar thing is going on here that with like the citric acid cycle. You don't have to memorize all of these reactions, but um, there are a couple of things I wanna point out. You need to understand the three phases. We have the first phase is carbon fixation, second is reduction, the third is regeneration. So know those three phases. I want you to know that um, we have a molecule called ribulose bisphosphate, RUBP. I want you to know that RUBP is a five carbon sugar. That five carbon sugar is gonna meet up with a one carbon, AKA carbon dioxide. So when the five carbon and the one carbon combine, through the enzyme Rubisco, Rubisco is an enzyme, 
that's going, this is called carbon fixation. When you attach a carbon from carbon dioxide to our five carbon RUBP, we then make this six carbon intermediate. That six carbon intermediate then turns into our three carbon molecules where we end up with the three carbon, um, three carbon G3P. I don't care that you know three phosphoglycerate or one three bisphosphoglycerate. I, that isn't as important to me, but understand G3P, RUBP, Rubisco, and understand the accounting of the carbons. Um, now, to make um, one G3P, we had to do that cycle three times. That's why there's a three here. That's why you see three gray dots there. So to make one G3P, you have to use three CO2s. In other words, we have to fix three CO2s. We, do, we fix one CO2 per turn of the cycle, okay? Um, there's also um, a phase where we add ATP. So um, part of this process of getting to G3P, we have to invest some of that, that ATP that we made in the light reactions. Um, and then we have to do a reduction reaction. By reduction, basically what we're doing is we're attaching this hydrogen on the NADPH, we're attaching the hydrogen to this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to make our G3P. Basically, we're adding energy to our molecule. We're reducing this molecule. This is gonna give it more stored energy. We're adding more carbon to hydrogen bond. That's really what we're doing when I say reduction. We're adding more carbon to hydrogen bonds. Now, the last phase is regeneration. We have to regenerate that RUBP that we used to do the cycle in the first place. So again, to make one G3P, we have to do that whole cycle three times, okay? Um, so the numbers I want you to think of is one G3P, that's an output. To make that one G3P, we had to put in three CO2s. We then had to use six NADPHs, NA, it's a DPHs. So that's an input. We then had to input nine ATPs, so one, three, six, nine. Those are the numbers. You had six of them here. And then part of regenerating our RUBP, we had to use three ATPs to do that. So one, three, six, nine. One G3P made, three CO2s invested, six NADPHs invested, and nine ATP invested. Okay. Um, now this uh, this G3P, oh, I'll leave it at that. That's good for this slide. Any questions here? Okay, um, that's most of it. This slide is a good summary slide. Um, I like that they have the tree over here showing like we get the water that we use um, from the roots. And then we get the uh, oxygen, the carbon dioxide we need from the atmosphere. We release the oxygen out of the leaf. Um, photosystem two, the purpose of that, remember that was to, um, or what am I saying? Photosystem two, um, <clears throat> the main chlorophyll there is P680. We replace the electrons of P680 using water. That's the purpose of the water. Um, and whenever you, whenever you then remove those electrons from water, that then creates the oxygen that gets released here. Uh, the first electron transport chain, its main goal was to make ATP. Um, photosystem one, what went with photosystem one, that was uh, P700. Um, and then the electron transport chain at the end of uh, photosystem one, its main goal was to make NADPH. I'll do that in black, NADPH. Okay. And then um, our ATP and NADPH that we made in the light reactions, that goes to the Calvin cycle. And um, this first step here, that's carbon fixation. And then here, this is where um, we do um, the reduction. The reduction happens because of our, we were investing that NADPH. Um, Oh, uh, and then for this over here, remember one, three, six, nine. You're making one G3P. 
you have to invest three CO2s because we do this cycle three times. Three turns of the cycle to make one G3P. So you have to use three CO2s. Um, you use six NADPHs. And you use nine um, ATP. One, three, six, nine. Um, last thing, that G3P, we can turn that G3P, like if I want to, let me do that in black, that G3P, if I want to store it, like if I have too much sugar and the plant wants to store it, they store it as starch. If I need to transport that G3P to somewhere else in the plant, the transport form of G3P is sucrose. Um, sucrose is also known as table sugar. Um, oh, locations. Uh, remember, this is the thylakoid, right? Thylakoid. And this is the stroma. Any questions? I think that's... Uh, this is the last slide. So this slide is really good at kind of... Um, this is like seventh grade biology. Like when I taught seventh grade, this is really what I wanted to get them to understand is that relationship between cellular respiration and photosynthesis, that they're opposites of each other. So don't, I know it's easy to get lost in all those details, but understand the basic story here that you learned in middle school. The basic story is the oxygen that plants produce and the sugar that plants make, we breathe in that oxygen, we can eat that, um, we can eat our food, or the plant can use that glucose that it made puts it in the mitochondria, uses that oxygen to do cellular respiration, and then, and then you get out ATP that you can use for cellular work, and you lose some energy as heat. Then, when you do cellular respiration, you lose CO2 and water. That CO2 and water can then be used to fuel photosynthesis. And on and on it goes. So the, the, the processes are the opposites of one another. Uh, any questions? Okay.